continue it in this second stanza. It would be a priceless win away from home for them as they attempt to get back into the finals race. Melbourne victory. Pretty much assured a spot in the top six now. But they'd uh, like to enter the finals with some momentum as Strebray Delovsky gets us underway for this second half. Trimmers, the game really on an even keel at the moment. Yeah, it's getting interesting to see what the strategy coming out of halftime. I sense that Ernie Merrick would want his team to just lift the tempo a little bit. They sort of got lulled into that slow-paced game, which really suited the Jets. I think Branko Kalina will be pleased. He'll be telling them they've got to be really sharp in their defensive work. They're a little sloppy early. And perhaps keep using the flanks because they got some joy from those wide areas. And he perhaps will just tell a couple of his midfielders, if you see that opportunity unfold, perhaps chance your arm a little bit. Just give them that extra numbers in the box to try to get that killer touch. Of course, both teams uh, were in action on the weekend, backing up on Wednesday night. Newcastle with the tougher task, having to travel from Wellington on the weekend. As they come forward now early on in the second half, the ball played. For Jeremy Brocky, who was bouncing up and down with his arms in his air, perhaps indicating that Far post was the better option rather than the near post from James Vigili, who was pretty good in the first half of football. Here's Pondelyak for the Melbourne victory. Stopped in his tracks. To Puzzo, made that challenge. They can't keep possession though, the Jets. Here's Pondelyak again. Angulo. Looking for Robbie Cruz, missing his target. He'll get another chance here, Marvin Angulo. Duganzic. Now Robbie Cruz. Look at the numbers around him. Three Jets players within a few metres of the Socceroo striker. Smart lead by Pondelyak for Cruz. Now Ferreira. Lovely ball in by Ferreira. Tom Pondelyak. And very close behind was Nikolai Topol Stanley. First corner of the second half. Yeah, great defensive cover from Nikolai Topol Stanley. It was clever work from Ferreira, and it's classic Melbourne victory. They love to play in the tight areas. They back themselves with their technique and their touch. And Pondelyak, he just drifted beyond the midfield line. It had to be quick thinking from Topol Stanley to get across. So, first corner of the second half to be taken by Mate Duganzic for the Melbourne victory. Vargas the target over his head. Now Cruz there to sweep up. Frees himself. Sends the ball back in deep. Duganzic gets it across the box. Dangerous, almost an own goal. Kennedy needed to be sharp, and he was. Oh, a nervous moment there for Galloway. It was a clever ball from Robbie Cruz. He picked out Duganzic, and that's a good ball. Right into that awkward position. I tell you what, Galloway, he had a swing at that with the left foot as well. He's probably lucky he didn't get any contact on it. The initial chest control was headed for the direction of Kennedy. A little bit of moment of panic, perhaps, from the young defender. He got, he got away with it. Smart first in instinct, though. Under pressure, he needed to make up his mind very quickly. And the chest down was a good one. Didn't need to panic his goalkeeper though with that clearance. As uh, Michael Pekovic just gets up on his feet gingerly after the pressure applied by Marko Jesic. for the Melbourne victory. Allsop to Angulo. Back to Allsop. It's been an extraordinary record for Danny Allsop in the, the last four games. He's scored the first goal of every one of the last four contests. He could keep that record intact by doing so tonight again. It's been a fabulous return to the A-League for Danny Allsop. We should really be surprised. 90-odd appearances, 40-odd goals. He does have a wonderful track record. He has stepped up for Ernie Merrick when he needed him. His Cruz dispossessed. Not 
don't think we've seen the best of Robbie Cruz tonight. And perhaps that long journey from Qatar is certainly taking its toll. Here's Lebano Haliti, the Puzo. To, to deliver for Yesic. Too high for him. Matthew Kemp has some time to impose himself in the contest to clear the line. Fiorentini putting it out of play for a throw. We spoke about the crowd here tonight uh, at Etihad Stadium. Uh, not a big one either. Last Sunday saw Melbourne Victory's lowest crowd of uh, their history. Just over 8,000 for their game against uh, Gold Coast United. And behind Ben Kennedy's goal tonight, uh, an empty section where the Blue and White Brigade uh, is normally congregated. Melbourne taking that end now through Robbie Cruz to Garncic. Cruz looking to play to Garncic in. Good strength shown by Marte to Garncic. As the Newcastle Jets able to clear. Tarek Elridge doing some good work on the last line of defence. Full played for Jeremy Brock. Did that hit him on the back of the head? Free kick awarded to the home side. He's battling away at the moment, Jeremy Brocky, but there's that stand to which you referred, Zappa. Yeah, normally that's chock a block uh, trimmers, that uh, bay that you see empty. And uh, we're told at uh, half time that there was a protest by the Blue and White Brigade because they weren't allowed to bring in their normal flags and banners. So they've decided to, en masse, get out of that area in a vote of protest against uh, the security and the stadium management here. And uh, there's a section of them there on the third tier here at Etihad Stadium. It's a shame because uh, they normally create such a wonderful atmosphere and environment for the Melbourne victory here at Etihad Stadium in particular. Here's Kemp. Let's hope they sort it out for the Asian Champions League and perhaps even finals if... FFA decide to post a final here should Melbourne finish in that fourth position. Here's Kemp again. Now Cruz. And once again, just some signs, trimmers, that his sharpness is not there. And to be expected. He's had a busy month and a long trip home. But as we know with Robbie Cruz, he's got a wonderful ability to create something when you least expect it. So Newcastle will be well advised. And they'll have long memories about what he did to them late in the game the last time they came to Melbourne in the Newcastle Jets. He didn't play a lot of football. He came on in the 90th minute against Bahrain for the Socceroos. Replaced Harry Kill in the 53rd. And here he is on the ball. Robbie Cruz. He scored one against Uzbekistan. And he scored another tonight. Pondelyak receives the Cruz pass. Drives the ball in. Comes off uh, top of Stanley. Kennedy kept that in according to Strebray Dolovsky. My initial thought it was over the line. The assistant referee in perfect position though he was on the near touch line as that ball deflected. Just on Robbie Cruz. He hasn't played a lot of football over there, Trimmers, uh, in the month that he was over there. Came on in the 53rd minute in that semi-final and then in the 103rd minute in the final. So not so much game fatigue but perhaps fatigue from the travel required to get back here yesterday as Topol Stanley comes forward. Geez, I tell you what, I thought Topol Stanley may be in a, with a chance of a shot on goal on the left, but uh, Adrian Mayer came from nowhere and uh, put his foot in, forcing it out for a corner. Yeah, wonderful closing speed from Adrian Mayer. Just as Topol Stanley, who'd made a long run to present, it was great work from the central defender. I think initially he thought he was going to be in a shooting position, but Leia slammed that door shut. But another opportunity from the set piece has looked a viable option for the Jets this afternoon. They need the delivery. Well, they've had plenty of practice. This is uh, their fifth corner. Topol Stanley had a great chance in the first half from this position. They try a variation. Short one, Yesic. Looking to cut it back for Pajili. But Marvin Angulo was alert to it. And Tom Pondelyak keeps it in play. Needs some support forward. Now Cruz provides it, as does Angulo. Cuts it inside, gets around wheelhouse. All stop waiting. And that's where he goes. Kemp with the overlap run. And 
his cross deflected out for a corner kick. It's corner number nine for Melbourne. It's been noticeable that Matthew Kemp hasn't got himself forward as much as we're used to seeing, or indeed we saw in the first part of the opening half of this game. At that time he's managed to win a corner kick. So here's Dugantic again. Layer in there for Melbourne. He's heading in his direction, but Topol Stanley has been outstanding both defensively and, and in an attacking sense from the set pieces for the Newcastle Jets this season. He wins the final touch on that occasion. Ferreira can't keep it in play, but he does win the front. Here's Cruz. Bounce it across. Also couldn't control it. He left it. Gunzic and the Newcastle Jets will clear. Kennedy under pressure. Squeezes it away just in time. Here's Angula. Out to Gunzic. Pondulyak offering a run. Fiorentini with the intercept. Pondulyak tries again. Falls for Kemp. Another chance here for the Melbourne victory. Gigantic called to shoot. Pondulyak does! And Melbourne victory opened the scoring. Tom Pondulyak with an unorthodox effort. It finds the back of the net. Who cares? Well, they continue to force their way through the narrowest of pathways, the Melbourne victory. It's really their style. As we see Tom Pondulyak, who's renowned for those opportunist strikes, and he created one that time. It was Clever work from Dugandic. It looked as though he dwelt a little bit too long, but he's got such quick feet. In the end, he laid it off, and Pondiak had to invent something. And that is wonderfully creative from the veteran Pondiak. Outside of the right foot, the dipping chip over the top of Ben Kennedy. Wonderful improvisation and a wonderful finish. And Kennedy would be disappointed with that. It uh, just caught off his line a little bit. He wasn't expecting shot from that perspective from Tom Pondelyak. It was unorthodox, as I said, and caught the Jets keeper off his mark. It almost looked as though the opportunity had gone. The Gandic was drawing the heavy traffic. And it looked as though Pondelyak had no real play on the ball, but he manufactured something. So now the Jets need to manufacture something at the other end. Kutso's ball cut out, but he gets another chance. And Pulo, that's good. Hassling from the Costa Rican, and it opens up for him at the back. Look at the space here for Danny also, who has a wonderful opportunity to score again. That's uncharacteristic. The Melbourne victory striker. We've expected more from him, considering what he's delivered in the last four games. I'm not sure whether it was fatigue or what, but it was lacking the decisiveness that we've seen Danny also late. Great work from Angulo. Well, the game could have passed Newcastle by there. They worked so hard in the first 57 minutes to keep the victory at bay and keep this crowd fairly quiet. They've now found their voice, and all of a sudden it could have been 2-0. Wheelhouse for the Jets. Jilly looking to get the cross in. Kemp watching him closely. Didn't take a deflection, so a goal kick here awarded to the home side. It was wonderful work for Marvin Angulo. The fact that he drove hard at the centre of the defence, it lured the defenders across, and Galloway left also all on his own. As we look back at Tom Honoyer. The way he invented something here was incredible, really. There was no angle to get a real good swing at the football as Jesic closed him down. He manufactured something from nothing. And dangerous again here on the break is Angulo. Pondelia couldn't control it. Another missed opportunity. The victory fans thought there may have been a foul on the Costa Rican. Strip Bradilovsky says, play on. Leti has to put so in support, but gee, he was asking a lot of him there to run that one down. Let's have a look at this uh, contentious decision. 
great work again for Mangulo. So quick. Just got a little toe in just before the contact came. Tried to release Bondoyak. Again, Steve Brodolovsky, as he's prone to do, let the play continue. Newcastle Jets are preparing to make uh, their first substitution of the evening. And it will be Zhang Shu to come on the ground for James Vigili. Shu uh, controversially missed the uh, trip to Wellington. And what can only just be described as a clerical error and a complete oversight. They realised that uh, he didn't have the appropriate visa to head over to New Zealand to play. to uh, Newcastle either, it uh, happened, oh here we go, a red card, a straight one, and there's been plenty of talk this year and this season about the Melbourne victory and their disciplinary record, all of a sudden it's turned, Newcastle Jets receiving a straight red for that foul, Marcello Fiorentini, given his marching orders, let's have a look, well the ball was bouncing up into that area every player going at it and then Marcelo Fiorentini just followed through I'm not sure what he was thinking initially everyone went with a high foot and then as the ball came down he's just lashed out and caught Marvin and Gulo straight on the shin I'm not really sure what he was thinking he quickly went to apologize as though he didn't mean it but it looked like a clear case of a lash out from Fiorentini but I'll tell you what, uh, on first inspection trimmers, that uh, seems to be a very harsh penalty for that foul. Surely it was a foul, but did it warrant a straight red? I'm not quite sure what Fiorentini was actually doing. The ball was still up in the air, and somehow he managed to get his feet in a position where he made contact through the shin area of Van Gulo. As you see, Robert Cruz with a snapshot. Clearly, no play on the ball from Fiorentini. He's not actually looking at the shin area of Angulo, but he's definitely kicked across him. It's going to be interesting to hear what his thought process was at the time. He did uh, follow through on the second attempt too, which uh, perhaps made up Strip Ray Dolovsky's mind. It wasn't just the first. Yeah, I don't think there was any issue with the high feet. I think all three players were attempting to win the football, but then as the ball popped back up, Fiorentini's just smashed out across Angulo's shin. Well, all of a sudden, the, Very strange. Uh, yeah, all of a sudden the task has become a lot more difficult. <laughs> Things going bad to worse for Breko Kalina's sign. Red card on the weekend to Ryan Griffiths. He's missing for two. And, uh, now Marcello Fiorentini will be missing after that straight red for at least two. It's Marvin and Hula. Space starting to open up for the Melbourne victory. Oh, the crew's dispossessed. The Puzo playing forward. And the substitute Zhang Shu couldn't keep it in play. What we were talking about just before that incident, Trimmers, was the, the fact that Zhang Shu missed the trip to New Zealand on the weekend, and uh, it's not the first time it's happened for Newcastle Jets. You might remember last season, uh, Fabio Vignaroli had uh, the same issue, and uh, we had a same situation with uh, Adama Traore uh, at Gold Coast last season as well. So John Satsimus, uh, the CEO, saying that uh, it was a complete oversight, and he apologised to Zhang Shu. Isn't it? Once it happens once to any team in the league, you would have thought every club would have looked at the fixture. When do we have to travel to Wellington? And just make sure that everything's in order from a paperwork perspective. And uh, on the subject of uh, John Satsimus, uh, he announced during the week that uh, he'll be leaving the club at the end of the season. So some changes afoot at the Newcastle Jets off the park as well. They need a goal, the Jets. Will they get one here? The shots on target. Gee, dangerous play at the back there by Roddy Vargas. He got down on his tummy and headed it back to his keeper. But it was 
good incisive work. First out of midfield, and then Yesic with the shot on target. That tested Pekovic had a little bit more zing on it than he was expecting. And if we spoke about Pondriak being creative in the front third, well, Vargas equally so in a defensive capacity. Not sure he needed to be that extravagant. Ferreira gets through. A chance here for the victory to make it two. Good defending, Topol Stanley. Ferreira needed to deliver that ball earlier. Oh, he read his mind, Topol Stanley, didn't he? He stepped across a half a second before Ferreira wanted to take that space. That's wonderful. One-on-one -on -one defending. So the crowd's starting to find its voice here at Etihad Stadium. And Ernie Merrick looking to make another change on this contest. The first for the Melbourne victory. And it will be Ricardinho, the Brazilian, to come on. And Diogo Ferreira. Opportunity for Ricardinho. Melbourne in the ascendancy, a goal to the good, a man to the good, and some 25 odd minutes to go. He'll be looking to get himself in some dangerous positions. Hasn't been a real great season for Ricardinho. He's had his moments. And he had just two goals. And this is his 19th appearance for the Melbourne victory. receives from Tugadzic. Now and Hula back to Robbie Cruz. It opens up for him here. He may have thought about the shot there, but decided the pass for Allsop was the better option. Jets able to clear. Puzo under pressure from Ricardinho. And the Brazilian gives away the free kick. Too eager in the tackle there, Ricardinho, who, who must be feeling the pressure. You've seen the return of Danny Allsop and the form he's been in. Robbie Cruz outstanding for all the season. Thompson, you know when he's fit, will be straight back in the squad. And Dugantic has been impressive of late too. So all of a sudden, spots at a premium in that attacking position for the Melbourne victory. So he'll want to make a good impression here. Well, the Melbourne victory have uh, registered back-to-back -back clean sheets their last two games after recording only one in their previous 15 so some promising signs despite the absence of Kevin Musket the captain the defensive line holding up well in their last few games we'll have to get uh, used to life without the uh, Melbourne victory captain of course Newcastle Jets here, find some room. Zhang Shu, that was great footwork by the Chinese international. And he wins a corner. It was fantastic work first from Adam. It's a wonderful work, strength to hold off Ricardinho in the corner. Then he went between two men to release Shu. Kept that friend, which as we've seen him do quite often in the couple of games he's played. He's got a great ability to read the play and use that ability. He's the spare man a lot of the time, but comes across, helps out. And that time he got across quickly. Well, Zhang Xu scored uh, his first goal in the A-League against Gold Coast a couple of weeks ago. Love one here, and he might have a chance. Ball headed in his direction. And uh, Petkovic sees that one over the line for another corner kick for Newcastle. Better delivery from Jesic that time. He put it in a spot where someone could at least get on the end of it. Rocky's been prominent all night in those aerial battles. He was clever from Halidi just to ease that back into the danger area. Corner number seven for the Jets. Temple Stanley, the obvious target this time. Pekovic hurts all danger by coming confidently and delivering quickly for Angula, who sprints quickly down the other end of the park. Delivers it for Robbie Cruz. Robbie Cruz should score. Robbie Cruz does score. The returning Socorro makes it two. Melbourne now in Cruz's control. Brilliant. Counter-attack for Melbourne victory. Michael Pekovic came and collected that corner kick. And I'd like to see the clock on that because the transition was incredible. Marvin Angulo, who's really run rampant in this second half. Quick throw for Pekovic. And then Angulo straight into the heart of that Jets defence. And a lovely ball. Give some credit to Robbie Cruz. He had a lot of ground to make up to catch Marvin Angulo. But that's a classy finish. We said he doesn't need too many opportunities to make a mark. 
And that's a wonderful goal from Robbie Cruz. Well, what a few days it's been for the Melbourne victory striker. Coming on as a substitute in the final of the Asian Cup for the Socceroos. Almost scoring the winner in injury time against Japan. Or in extra time, I should say. And then back to Melbourne. Only arrived here yesterday, of course. Scores the second goal, which should secure all three points for his club side. Now, Stradway Dolovsky will have a decision to make here. It will be a yellow card this time. Again, Marvin Angulo, he's just too quick, too sharp. Sometimes when he dangles that foot out to just get that crucial touch, he's inviting the tackle. That time, Wheelhouse was the late one. Just came across his line. He's caught Marvin Angulo. Yellow card for the Newcastle Jet midfield. It might have even been the arm across the body that caused the damage. What about that goal from the Melbourne victory? We talk about efficiency, ruthless counter-attack. Would have been more, wouldn't have been more than two, three touches maximum between Pekovic catching the ball and Cruz dispatching it in the back of the Jets net. And that was always going to be the danger down a man pressing on trying to retrieve something from the game. And they had a couple of good moments, back-to-back -back set pieces. And then they were caught out. Well, a wonderful incisive movement from the Melbourne victory. So Joe Wilhouse picks up his uh, second uh, booking of the season. That's uh, not a bad record considering it's his 14th game tonight. Perhaps sensing the danger there after Marvin and Hula released Robbie Cruz just minutes earlier. So the points look to be in the bank now for the Melbourne victory. They will momentarily leapfrog Gold Coast United. Gold Coast, of course, playing tonight in our, our second game in our Wednesday night double header against Adelaide United. With a few games in hand as well. They will still be favoured to finish on top of the victory, but points in the bank counts. As Matthew Kemp hassles his way forward. All still in play. That, that game that's following this one just ups the ante a little bit. We know Adelaide are desperate. They're trying to retrieve that second spot on the ladder, but all of a sudden Gold Coast, just something extra to think about. And Branko Kalina making a double substitution here. Well, I think uh, he might think that uh, he's got nothing to lose here by making these changes. It'll be uh, Jacob Pepper to come on for Marco Jesic. Already seen uh, Pepper on a couple of occasions this season. Off the bench, another of their youth brigade. It's his third appearance in the Hyundai A-League. And a big moment for Mario Simic, his first taste of Hyundai A-League action. Another of their youth team, so it is now really resembling the National Youth League team out there for Branko Kalina. Well, as optimistic as he might be, Branko Kalina, I think he senses the inevitable here. It's probably not a bad idea to give these boys a taste of first-team football knowing that uh, they now need to win their last three games of the campaign to have a chance of playing finals. Perhaps just give the opportunity to the likes of Yesic and the lady just to freshen themselves up a little bit. I think those two will play important roles over the last couple of weeks of the season. on that extra responsibility now in the absence of Kevin Musket. He's done a very good job too. Only 24 years of age, Adrian Leyer. A great deal of confidence shown in him by Ernie Merrick, giving him the captain's armband. He's done a great job uh, in the shadows of Kevin Musket. Not only has he led his team to consecutive victories, he's also marshaled a defence that has registered consecutive clean sheets for the first time since around seven and eight. Blocky 
plays a good ball forward, offside the call on the assistant on the far side. Tari Gerwitz getting into the final third. So Tari Gerwitz just a little bit too eager. He's a little unlucky, Rodrigo Vargas was actually tracking shoe, that's why he stepped forward. So Ernie Merrick going to his bench again and uh, Matthew Pashini coming on the ground for Matthew Kemp. As we said, Matthew Kemp still really on the rehabilitation process. It's only his uh, seventh appearance this campaign. And uh, he admitted uh, last night that he's still not 100% fit, but feeling a lot more confident about his body and ability to run out again. The second goal coming at a really opportune moment for Ernie Merrick. Gives him the luxury of removing the likes of Matthew Kemp from this game. Just keeping him a little bit cotton wool. He knows how much he's going to need his experience and quality come the latter part of the season and the finals. Wheelhouse has some space here. Simic dispossessed. Get another chance here, Simic. Puzo. I'd love to see Adam Puzo score a goal. 100 games tonight. Hasn't scored yet in the Hyundai A League. I think if they get a penalty trimmers, he might be the man just for the occasion. Not sure, Zappa. What would you do if you're on the bench? <laughs> Not sure what team rules <laughs> dictate in that situation. Somehow, I think that's the furthest thing from Greco Kalina's mind at the moment, and probably from Adam to Putzos as well. They'll know that they've given a good account of themselves tonight. An undermanned lineup for long periods, they held their own. But you always sense that that little bit of extra quality in the front third was going to tell at some point, and it did. And now their thoughts are on those for the final three fixtures that they need to get maximum points out of, you'd imagine. Here's also. Found a way through Mate Dugantic. And Gulo was instrumental in setting up that second goal. Now Dugantic. Leia getting forward for Melbourne. And Gulo with a long range effort. It was swinging back, wasn't it? Ben Kennedy was slightly concerned. Well, if you thought his free kick in the first half wasn't quite up to the Hernandez standard, Tell you what, that was very much like his fellow Costa Rican. Lovely swinging ball from Angulo. Had lovely height on it. It's probably only a metre or two away from hitting the target. But he's growing in confidence, Angulo. He's been very, very good in this second half. As we said, a little bit of a different role for him tonight. He's had to really marshal the centre of that midfield. So often we've seen him almost on a left midfield position. Using the flanks tonight, much more central. But as the game's worn on, Looks like he's really warming to it. Layup for Vicar Dignol. He'll win front possession here, delivers the ball in quickly. Castle doing enough to clear it and uh, throw in you know, Melbourne's way. He's mentioning penalties, and if Adam Caputo got a chance to score one, so that we play here as Cruz whips it in. And Pula. Locked. They've never received the penalty this season, the Newcastle Jets. Trimmers, the only team in the Hyundai A-League not to win a penalty this season. Simic. Shot blocked by Petr Franjic. That was another great example of what Franjic has been very impressive at doing, reading the play, and he stepped forward. Lovely work from Simic, he eluded a couple of players. Here's Cruz, who's very good at eluding players himself. Oh. Stanley, well, you have to give him full marks tonight. Something he's very good at, blocking, <laughs> attacking forays. Zhang Shu, could be through a goal here. Zhang Shu tries an early ball, and he misses the target. Well, in the context of this football game, that is a very good opportunity for the Newcastle Jets. I think Simic with the breaking pass straight through the middle of that victory defence. The shoot did a good job of anticipating it. Hasn't sat up. He tried the first time. Volley dragged it 
past the near post. One of the better looks at the goal they've had this evening, the Jets. Robbie Cruz just uh, looking to, feeling the effects of uh, some cramp just a minute ago. And Eric does have uh, one more substitution at his disposal. Luke Pilkington, who we uh, really haven't seen a lot of this season. You might recall he was uh, one of those uh, search for a football superstar winners last year. Won a contract on the back of that program. Looks quite lively since uh, coming on. Looks to receive the ball again. Mount wide, but Vargas is there. And he clears it up for Melbourne. Get the feeling it could be another goal in this for the home side as Vicardinho now bears down on goal. Look to get it in early again, but guess who was in the way? Nikolai Topol Stanley's made an art form with that sort of positioning. But again, great work from Angulo. He tracked back to the edge of his own penalty area, and it was a 50-60 yard pass that he played to release Ricardinho. Brilliant work from Angulo. Seems to be enjoying that midfield general role. To Ganzic. Also looking to provide an option at the top of the box. Stanley, great clearance. Only as far as Angulo, though. Here's Fashini, who whips it in a near post. That's hit the post. The save from Kennedy, tipped on to the woodwork. Corner kick, Melbourne. Well, we see the right spot of Fashini's made. I'm not sure that he was actually meaning that. I think he was trying to whip that one in as Kennedy was caught a little bit by surprise. In the end, the combination of the keeper's palms and the post managed to save the day. Well, that would have been some way to open up your scoring account in senior football. Matthew Fashini. Corner kick whipped in. Son of a, a famous AFL player here uh, in Melbourne, Silvio Fashini. Good to see his son has uh, taken up the round ball code. Well, Robbie Cruz has come back tonight. It's been a successful return for the Socceroo. Just feeling the effects, though, in the last few minutes of that uh, long trip from Qatar. Yeah, wonderful to see him back. And again, like we said, not the dominant as we've seen him in previous outings this season, but that moment of quality when it was needed. It was a sublime finish. Sign of a man who's top of his game at the moment. And he gets a wonderful ovation from this Melbourne victory home crowd. Yeah, welcome home, uh, Robbie Cruz. Luke Pilkington, uh, the man to come on for him. His uh, second appearance of the season. The only other time uh, he's played this year was against the Newcastle Jets. He got 11 minutes that night. He'll get about eight. Here's another corner kick for Newcastle, number eight. Hefty corner count tonight. 18 in total. Pekovic looking to keep his third consecutive clean sheet this evening. Forced to come out. That does take that one cleanly. Hasn't had a lot to do, the Melbourne victory keeper tonight, but uh, when he's been called upon, He's been very solid. Pekovic with nine clean sheets uh, this season so far, so looking for number 10. Simic. Cross cut out by Marvin Angulo, and look at that control from the Costa Rican. Gee, he's uh, skillful, great to watch on the ball as we've seen so many of the Central Americans and South Americans.
bless us with their skills so far this season in the Hyundai A-League Tour. He's chock full of confidence at the moment. He's had a wonderful night. Becoming more and more dominant. I qualify that by the fact that they are playing against 10 men now and uh, Pirantini isn't, isn't on the park, but still, wonderful skill. seen the uh, wonderful play by so many of these imports this season. Perez and Flores and Hernandez. Quality of football, certainly the best we've seen in the six seasons of the Hyundai A-League. We look forward to what should be a mouth-watering prospect come finals time. With all of those players aforementioned involved. Here's Joe Wilhouse. Tries an early shot on goal, can't get it on target. So the Melbourne victory coming off uh, their lowest crowd of their history last Sunday. Well, not a bad effort tonight in a midweek uh, fixture. Over 11,000 here at Eddie Had Stadium. A lot of talk trimmers about the start of next season and whether it's going to be put back to October. Certainly some issues for the FFA to sort out with the early start in August this year, not attracting the interest and in crowds early on. The feeling that uh, if it does start in August, they will get a clean go at launching it. I just hope that uh, a lot more effort is put into the promotion in the early stages and midweek football fixtures also look like they may remain considering the number of games needed to play if they're starting that late. Questions that will be answered. So Newcastle Jets continue to have a go here. Mario Simic has been very lively since he's come on. Showed a willingness to get on the football. It's Pilkington. Fashini. Here's the man you speak of, uh, Mario Simic. Pressure by Ricardinho. Simic manages to get his cross away. Rocky looking for an option. And just to get it inside for Pepper. Zhang Shu to Jacob Pepper. It's a nice ball movement by the Jets. Jeremy Rocky caught offside on the edge of the 18 yard area. There's a good little forward movement from the Jets. Lovely little touch in there by Deputzo as well. In the end, Brocky just straying offside. They haven't given up here, the Jets. They've continued to try to play their football. As we said, Simic has been very impressive. Brocky's toiled hard all night. So in adversity, perhaps the opportunity for some of these younger players to get some game time and allow Branko Kalina to see what they're capable of in this sort of environment. Stanley has been the outstanding player in the Jets jersey tonight. Leading that defence admirably. I should also make mention of that. Issues faced by our friends up in North Queensland, the North Queensland Fury closing their offices yesterday, and uh, we wish you all the best up there in North Queensland. In the next 24 hours, our thoughts are with you. Here's Ricardinho for the Melbourne victory. His target was to Garzic, falls for Danny Olson. He'll have a shot of goal here, Danny Olson. Running out of time to continue this very impressive record of scoring in every goal in every game. Four games, five goals for Denny Olsop in his last four outings. It's been very noticeable since his return to the A-League that he's very comfortable and confident to take the ball on himself. Being very direct, putting 
pressure on defences. That time again, he was happy to get the ball run straight at the defence and look for the shooting opportunity. As you see Fashini drawing the free kick. Just a bit of footwork to elude Shu. Three minutes to be added, early kick taken. Yeah, that's easy for Ben Kennedy. Here he is, Zhang Shu. Daganzic with some space, also waiting for the early pass. And it needed to be early because that's why Denny also now offside. He'll be looking forward to the prospect of uh, joining his old partner in crime, Archie Thompson, for Melbourne Victory's next game and final game of the season. Thompson, Cruz, Alsop, and Hernandez. That is an imposing lineup. There he is, Archie Thompson, watching on from the sideline this evening. Well, one of the challenges for Ernie Merrick, which he has encountered over the years, is, is just finding that balance. It's such a patcher of options when it comes to the attacking part of the field, but in the past I've often found that trying to find that balance, especially through midfield, has been the challenge for him. Could be pleased with the way the defensive area is set up. Been very impressive the last couple of outings. Well, three clean sheets by the looks of things in the last three, and so many people were asking the question that uh, they were going to do without Kevin Musket. They've answered that question emphatically in the last three. And earlier in the season, Trimmers, you might remember that uh, they played three nil-nil draws consecutively without Kevin Musket as well, so... Yeah, the stats are very compelling. I think eight games without Kevin Musket, six clean sheets. Perhaps the future rosy in that area for the Melbourne victory. Rocky trying his uh, luck from the distance. Pekovic got down low just to make sure. Rocky's tried hard all night. But still, they can't find a way past Pekovic. Speculative at best, really. Pekovic probably didn't need to make a save, but... Just went safety first. Hey, good guys, good guys, good guys. Well, it's been a job well done for Ernie Merrick. He said it's been a busy schedule. They've been up to North Queensland and then back and a couple of games in quick succession. Here we go, Dignol. Good burly ball in and Ben Kennedy needed to be alert. And then smart goalkeeping as well. Vargas with the header back. Just for a moment, I thought it may not have enough on it. No problem at all for Michael Pikovic. So there it is, the final whistle. Three wins in a week for the Melbourne victory. Three in a row. It now puts them in fourth position on the Hyundai A-League table and puts the pressure on Gold Coast United, quickly becoming their fierce rivals. Gee, what a matchup that will be in the finals should those two meet. Melbourne on their way to finals football. They confirm that they'll be part of top six action with this win this evening. Full-time score here at Etihad Stadium. It's the Melbourne victory two. Newcastle Jets nil. So now, a big three games coming up for Branko Kalina and his side. They need to win the next three to play finals football. Well, what a whirlwind it's been over the last few days for Robbie Cruz. He's now with Mel McLaughlin. Thanks very much, Zappers. Uh, Robbie, nice to come back to a winning team. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, if we got this win, we, we were cemented a final spot, so it was a good overall victory, and I th think we deserve the win. You waited patiently through that first half. Uh, you've added to your goal tally to make you second on the uh, all-time list for this season, so th that's another nice little reward. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, I've been keeping tabs whilst, whilst I've been overseas, and, and not, I think it's a bit hard to catch Sergio, so, um, yeah, I'm vying for that second spot, and not, but more importantly, it was just about winning. Um, if I score, it's a bonus. What about strike partners? You've got Danny Allsop, and of course, Archie's still yet to come back. Yeah, I mean, um, Archie's a fantastic player, and obviously with him coming back in the team, they're going to have a great strike, 
strike force. So, um, yeah, it's, we're, we're really looking forward to it. You must have come back on such a high. How's the body hold, holding up after that performance and all the travel? Yeah, I mean, um, overall, overseas, I think it was a, it was a good tournament for, for the Australian team. So, um, personally, I, I think I did fairly well. So, um, no, I'm feeling good. It's, um, yeah, just, just got to rest up now. We've got a bit of a break for our next game. It's going to be a massive game in Adelaide. Congratulations. Thank you. Cheers, man. I've got the other goal scorer now, Tom Pondeliak. Tom, uh, congratulations on your goal and on the uh, result today. Must have been a bit of relief. You uh, breaking the deadlock. Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, obviously, it was a bit testing for us tonight. We've obviously played in uh, extreme heat the other day as well, only three days ago. So, boys got heaps of character and uh, obviously to come out tonight and uh, get a result was uh, was exactly what we were after. We weren't looking for a, for a draw or anything, so we got what we needed and uh, obviously I think we've uh, secured a finals berth. Yeah, you have certainly uh, secured that finals berth and for now you're up to fourth. You put these weeks of controversy and all these being in the headlines, all of that behind you, there's something about this team that could just pull it together. Yeah, I think, look, uh, obviously uh, Musk has been spoken about a lot lately in the media and uh, we've all backed him 100% and if anything it's galvanised the team. Uh, we're more than happy for people to slag off the team and, and say what they want, but we know what we're made of and uh, I think uh, every other team in the in the final series will be looking over their shoulder now. Well done, thanks very much. Thank you. Terrific performance by the Melbourne Victory. They'll play finals football tonight. Stay tuned here on Fox Sports. Another big game coming up. Gold Coast United against Adelaide. From Michael Zapponi, Paul Trimboli, Mel McLaughlin and the Fox Sports crew, it's goodbye from Melbourne. Yep. This game couldn't come soon enough for Ernie Merrick and his men. Plenty of airtime given to his team's style of play after the derby and last Sunday's game against Gold Coast United for the Newcastle Jets. They need a win to make sure they're playing finals football this season. Let's have a look at the team news now and two changes for Ernie Merrick. Carlos Hernandez and Grant Rebin are out injured. Robbie Cruz comes straight into the 11 after the Asian Cup. The other change sees Marvin Agulo come into midfield. Franco Colina loses another player through injury, this time Taylor Regan, who hurt his hamstring against Wellington, so Sam Galloway gets his second start of the season. The other change is the inclusion of Labano Hiliti up front for the suspended Ryan Griffiths. Our referee for this one is Strebray Dolovsky.
Please listen to the directions of the Etihad Spaniard staff. Access to the city is also available via the train screen and is the best option. Any queries you may have upon leaving the venue may be directed to our staff present around the venue. All patrons are reminded that no alcohol is to be taken from Etihad Stadium and in the interest of patron safety, footballs are not to be kicked on the external concourse. Spectators must refrain from any disorderly conduct or conduct that may injure the reputation and...